In this video, we are talking about DNA replication. DNA is able to perform two processes. One is known as autocatalysis. And other is known as heterocatalysis. In autocatalysis, DNA would make a DNA molecule. That means DNA would give rise to DNA, that is replication, which we are discussing in this particular segment. And heterocatalytic means from DNA, there would be RNA synthesized. And RNA synthesized. The first process that is autocatalytic process is what we are discussing that is DNA replication. How? From one double helical DNA strand we get two double helical strands. And in the next one it is heterocatalytic that means from DNA we would get RNA. And this process is known as transcription. So this transcription process we will discuss later on. Right now we are taking up the first one that is autocatalytic process. Here, DNA molecule is replicating on its own. Now, when DNA has to replicate, it is a complex multi-step process. And there is a long list of enzymes which are required. So, here we are talking of all those enzymes which are needed for this process of replication. And we will keep writing the names of these enzymes simultaneously, their functions, and also understand how these enzymes actually work. We know that DNA molecule is a helical molecule. That means the two strands of DNA, they are coiled around each other. If we want these two strands to replicate, we want this coil to reopen so that the two strands get separated and on both, we can get the new DNA synthesized. So the first enzyme is helicase. The function of this helicase is to open the coil or the helix. That means if it is turned like this, helicase is going to open it. If you remember seeing a rope which is made up of two or three strings coiled tightly, then separating those two or three ropes from each other, that is what we mean. So we have to separate them. And how can this happen? Because what was holding these two strands together of DNA were hydrogen bonds. So helicase is going to open the helix or which can also be termed as unwind the helix. And this happens by breaking the hydrogen bonds. By breaking hydrogen bonds. And that is how the two strands get separated. Second enzyme, its name is topoisomerase. Topoisomerase is the next one which is going to be or which helps. Now, using helicase, the hydrogen bonds between these two have been broken. That means the helix has been unwound or open. But as we said, to we, we can compare it with those ropes. Suppose we pull those ropes apart. This gets separated and as soon as we leave those ropes, because of the tension that they have, they undergo recoiling. So what is the job of topoisomerase? It removes the tension from the individual strap. What it does is, let us compare it with this structure. Suppose these two fingers represent the coiling of DNA. Helicase is going to open it like this and then each strand has a tension. Topoisomerase cuts the strand from here, rotates it to release the tension and then reseals it at the same point using another enzyme called ligase. So function of topoisomerase is to release the tension. And how is this tension removed? It cuts, rotates and reseals the strand. So that is how the tension from those separated strands is removed. 
Now, because of these two enzymes, the helix has opened up and these two strands, they remain without getting coiled. There is one more enzyme which is going to give them little strength. So, this third enzyme is known as single strand stabilizing protein or enzyme. So, what is this enzyme going to do? After helicase has opened the strand, topoisomerase cuts it, rotates it and reseals. This protein or enzyme just makes them stable so that they are, they are without tension and without any uh, stress on those. So, these three enzymes. Fourth enzyme is ligase. Fourth enzyme is ligase. The function of ligase is joining. When topoisomerase cuts, then with the help of ligase, that cut piece gets attached again. Later on, when we come to the actual process, we would talk about pieces of DNA form and then they are joined later on. Again, ligase is going to help. So it is for joining of DNA fragments. Fifth enzyme which is required is DNA polymerase 1. DNA polymerase 1 helps in removal of primer and filling up of the gap. So it helps in removal of primer and filling the gap. Primer is a piece of RNA which is first formed. We will understand why this is required. But if RNA and DNA is formed, suppose there is an RNA and then DNA formed. So later on we have to remove this RNA piece that is primer and replace it with DNA. So that function is done by DNA polymerase 1. Next enzyme is known as primase. It is going to help in primer synthesis. Primer synthesis. Primer is a small segment of RNA. And this primer is actually DNA dependent RNA polymerase. It is actually DNA dependent RNA polymerase. That means it is going to help in synthesis of that small piece of RNA, so RNA polymerase, but it is controlled by DNA, so DNA dependent polymerase. Next enzyme is our most important enzyme. That is DNA polymerase 3 and this is the one which is actually going to help in synthesis of the DNA strand. All other enzymes are helping. This is the one which is actually participating in the process of DNA replication. It's a large molecule. It has three subunits. Alpha subunit. This is a catalytic unit. That means this is the one which is going to help in formation of bonds between the nucleotides. Then there is an epsilon subunit and a beta 2 subunit. Epsilon subunit helps in proof reading if there is something wrong, some wrong nucleotide has been added, then the epsilon subunit proofreads it. And DNA polymerase, ultimately it's going to check and replace that faulty nucleotide with the correct one. B2 or beta 2 is actually helping in or as a sliding clamp like subunit so that 
this DNA polymerase can hold on to that those two separated strands and it can replicate. Now there is an interesting thing about this DNA polymerase 3 that it can replicate both the strands simultaneously. That means if these two strands are separated, here is this DNA polymerase attached to it and then it moves, this strand also gets replicated and this strand also gets replicated. It is said that it works as a dimer. It can replicate both the strands of DNA simultaneously. Next enzyme which helps is phosphorylase. This is going to help in addition of phosphate because when the nucleotides are going to come, they need to be activated. Those are all monophosphates. They are to be turned into triphosphate. So this phosphorylase is going to help in activation of those nucleotides. Another enzyme is nuclease. Nuclease also helps in proofreading. So there are two enzymes which are going to help in proofreading. One, the epsilon subunit of DNA polymerase 3 and nuclease. So these are the enzymes which we require for the process of DNA replication. Each enzyme plays a very specific role. Helicase opens the helix. Topoisomerase re releases the tension. Single strand stabilizing protein stabilizes those separated strands. Ligase would help in joining of nucleotides. DNA polymerase 1 is actually the thing which is going to replace the primer and then fill the gap. Primase, which is actually an RNA polymerase, DNA dependent, will synthesize polymer, uh, this primer. This is the main enzyme, DNA polymerase 3, three subunits. Alpha is catalytic, beta 2 is sliding clamp, it is going to hold on to both the strands and epsilon subunit is for proofreading. Phosphorylase, addition of phosphate which is required for activation of nucleotides and nuclease which is another proofreading enzyme. So these nine enzymes are going to help in the process of DNA replication. Now in the next video we will start with the actual steps of